Algebra Chapter 1, Lesson 7, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about algebra. Now, we just did some problems where we have an equation and we're given just a few numbers to substitute in and to figure out which one uh, is the solution to the equation. Now, that's an okay method if you're only given a few numbers to do that, to evaluate the expression for each of them. But if the replacement set is really large, like we're talking about, I want to know from all possible numbers what are the ones that can make it uh, make the equation true. Uh, trying the numbers isn't a very good method because there's an infinite number of values that you could substitute in, so you'd spend the rest of your life and all of eternity substituting in values trying to figure out which ones make it true. And the key behind that is this, is just because you find one number that makes it true, how do you know there's not another number that makes it true? We talked about the solution set being one number or maybe more numbers. So even though you may substitute in a number and come, oh, this number makes the equation true, how do you know there aren't more? And the only way to know there aren't more is to try all of the possible numbers. And again, if the set, the replacement set is really small, that's okay. But if we're talking about all real numbers, well, that becomes a little bit more challenging because you have an infinite number of values from which to choose. So what we have to do when we have uh, a large set of numbers is we need to come up with a way that we can solve these that gives us the answer without having to substitute all of the values in. Now, one way to do that is to kind of, by trial and error, figure out which values will make the solution or solve the equation. So, if the equation itself contains small numbers and only one operation, we can kind of do this mentally. Uh, we can just trial and error almost substitute numbers in. So if I'm given the equation x plus 6 equals 13, well, what value could I put in for uh, x that will make this equal 13? And I can kind of figure out, oh, well, I know, let's see, 6 and 5 is 11, 6 and 6 is 12. Well, 6 and 7 is 13, so 7 would be my solution set. Or maybe here, 4 times something is 32. Well, 4 times what number is 32? Oh, yeah, 8. 4 times 8 is 32. So we can solve the equation mentally. Now, this works okay, again, if the equation is very simple. There's only one operation involved, and, you know, I, I can kind of trial and error put some stuff in. Now, what I've noticed over the years as I've taught upper level math is sometimes I'll get students that go through the lower levels of math using this method exclusively. In other words, they're pretty good with substituting numbers in and doing some quick calculations in their head. And so as the equations get more complicated, they don't really learn the math behind it, and they continue to use this trial and error. And when you get into the upper level courses, trial and error just doesn't work. I mean, you're going to spend 30 minutes just trying to figure out numbers by trial and error, plugging them in, whereas you could solve the equation in less than a minute if you would apply the properties. So it's very important that as we begin our journey through algebra to understand that as equations become more complicated, mentally solving them is not going to be possible. And at best, it's going to be very cumbersome and really take a very long time. However, if we learn to use the properties of math, we can solve these very complex equations and do them rather quickly. And algebra is where we begin this journey, where we start solving more and more complex equations by using these properties. And the way we get better at that is to, even though we can solve the equation mentally, is to not be so concerned with, well, I know what the answer is, but to apply the properties of math with these simple equations so that I can see how the math works, so that when I get to the more complicated equations, I have the foundation in math that I need in order to solve those. And so though these equations that we're going to be working with are kind of simple, 
And we're going to start off mentally solving these. When it comes to using the properties and applying the properties and seeing how they work, it really is important that you use the properties to solve the equations and not to rely on your mental skills. So what am I saying in all this? Basically, it's coming down and what I'm saying is this. The answer, the solution to the equation, while important, is not the ultimate goal, nor is it the most important thing in algebra. The process of using mathematical properties is the more important idea and the more important concept. Therefore, even if you're able to solve the equation mentally, that's a good thing to do because now you know what the answer should be. But now go back and apply the properties of math and see if you can't mathematically arrive at the answer that you already know, the, uh, the answer to what you already know it is. I don't know if that made any sense. See if you can't, by mathematical properties, get the answer that you already figured out with your head. Okay? The more complex equations, they are coming and you're not going to be able to rely upon your mathematical just ability to plug in numbers and by trial and error try to come up with something. So use your mental ability to come up with the answer so you know where you're going to end up, but then practice the mathematical properties so you're learning the math to understand how you got that answer in your head. And again, you're developing and you're laying a foundation so that when we get to the more complex problems and the more complex equations, you understand the math well enough where you can even uh, solve even the more complex equations that mentally you'd spend a lot more time trying to figure out by just substituting in numbers and guessing and checking or using trial and error. Okay? So... Make sure you're practicing the properties for solving these equations as we work through them, and you'll be much more successful as you move forward in your academics.